Okay. So this year's 2016 Hackers Challenge game was a great success. Hopefully you guys all played and had lots of fun, because I had fun building it. So let's give you a few statistics. Let's talk a little bit about what was on the game this year. So out of this crowd, we had 248 people that submitted a single code or logged in and tried to play the game. So yay, good for you. That's awesome. 72 hours of gameplay, and there were only nine hours out of that 72 hours when a code was not submitted. So that's probably, I'm guessing, uh, it came to be right around between 2 and 5 a.m. every night. But there were a couple nights when you'd have a single code and uh, uh, submitted, and then uh, it would roll around. So you guys were up late. Good. That's how you win. Uh, for those of you that didn't log in and see the game board, here it is. We had a large smattering of puzzles. There were 45 of them showing, 43 of them showing on the game board. Everything ranging from reverse engineering and binary lateness to crypto madness to spider webs and basic puzzle solves. Um, thank you very much to the many that helped me build these puzzles. I couldn't do it by, by myself, and I'll get to that thank you slide here in just a second. But there were four vault missions beyond just the lock picking column that was showing on the game board we had four we also had codes hidden throughout the entire conference on your badges on sign in the lock pick village and so as a note of those hidden puzzles there were only four submissions from the lock pick village or from the vault that got played uh, one of them was the shredded paper code that was in the machine <laughs> well, it got reassembled and uh, submitted. Everybody got their own. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still a hidden puzzle on your badge. I want to keep playing this game. It'll be a fun crypto puzzle for you. So if you solve the puzzle on the back of your badge, find me on Twitter, at Zevlag, or at Hackers Challenge. I have a prize for you. Throughout this game, there were over 5,000 solve attempts. That's nice. Good job. Big thank you to the many people who helped me build this puzzle and build these games. Uh, oh, I have a typo. I missed miss it, but uh, Lonnie Bates built our lock picture column. Really appreciate Lonnie. Thanks, buddy. Jimmy Longs, you made it happen. Gray Ronan, Lawrence Davis. Yeah. Thank you. He built our potent ponables and our binary linkness and contributed to several others and really made this game fun. Thank you. And here's the top list of top 10 wrong answers. Do you see one of yours up there? Okay. Oh, you want to go back? I'll go back one more time for you. You're looking at it. You're welcome. What was that? Yes, it will. So I'm going to give you a walkthrough of one challenge. The one on the board that was not solved. Yeah, I hear lots of sides. So this was it. I had fun building this puzzle. Lots of, and honestly, it's a big rickroll. All this stuff, everything you see, it doesn't do a thing. All these fun text boxes that say, fuzz this, secure that, it doesn't make a single difference. You can put whatever you want in that text box, it won't change. Oh, there's one check box that does blink, and it'll make your spinning wheel blink when you submit it. But it's all done client side. So you click it, and the JavaScript, the UIDs, the random timeout, it's all done on your client browser. There's nothing, no interaction with the server in any way. The only interaction you have with the server is your first re request. And there's the vulnerability that uh, would have allowed you to solve the puzzle. HTT Poxy. Follow the news. Be aware of the vulnerabilities that are going about every day. And I love using the Build Hackers Challenge puzzles. So if you were to send a request to the server, 
as simple as this, just your get request, and add that line that's in orange instead of yellow that says proxy, and then the name of a proxy server, it would send its request to your proxy server with the secure proxy key right there at the top. With, and that was to solve your challenge. Don't trust user input. Whether it comes from a text field or from the browser via HTML header, HTTP header, to secure your environment. So HTTP proxy was a vulnerability and it would allow you to solve those puzzles. I believe that is the end of what I have for here. I'll just make sure before I move on to the rest of the prizes and awards. Yep. So that's the Hackers Challenge game for this year. And uh, shortly, we will announce the winners. Thank you for playing. You. What, no intro music? No, I'm just teasing. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was going to walk up there and tell him to do something like from an 80s TV show as I walked up or something. All right. We're about 20 minutes ahead of schedule. You guys ready to wrap up the con? So are about 15 or 16 other committee members. If you start chanting that, we'll stay. No, I'm just teasing. Don't, please don't. All right. Well, it is my wonderful opportunity to stand up here and close this great conference. Um, we as the conference committee uh, extend to you our appreciation and thanks for putting your time, your money, your efforts into joining us here at this awesome conference. Uh, it's, a, it's a labor of love for all of us. You know, none of us get paid to be here to do any of this stuff. It's all volunteer. All these people that have come up here before me just in the last little bit, they're awesome because they're willing to do hundreds of hours worth of work for something that is for the community. And so we appreciate them. In fact, here are their names. I want these people to stand up. You don't necessarily have to come up here, but would the committee members please stand and take a round of applause from this fine audience. All right, so just to give you just a tiny bit more information about the committee, um, they've been working since just a little bit after January this, last, or this year on this conference. There were every other week we had conference calls that always lasted about an hour, it seemed, because we were hashing out all of the things. Every little detail that you can imagine has been talked about at length by this committee. But we've come up with a conference that we think works quite well. So these are wonderful people. It's my honor and privilege to work with them for this conference. I do want to take another moment. If the volunteers will stand up where you're at, there's many of them that aren't even here because they've left and done other things. Give them a round of applause. These individuals. These are the people that make our life as the committee a whole lot easier because we can't be everywhere doing everything all of the time. And so we're so grateful for wonderful members of the Utah Saint organization that are willing to volunteer their time while they're here at the conference. And so what, before I move on, I want to talk about every time we come to a conference, I always hear from somebody, hey, we want to get involved. We want to, can, can I help you guys next year? Can we do something? Is there some really cool thing that you could have us do? The answer is yes, um, and here's how you do that. A, number one, you have to be a member of the Utah Saint organization. And I don't have a slide for this, but those of you that are members understand it. Those of you that aren't, I'm about to educate you. that The Utah Saint organization um, is an organization of security professionals. They're the organization that runs Saint Con. Um, and you need to join the organization. Once you do, you are eligible to volunteer to be on the committee for the Saint Con conference or to be a volunteer if that's the commitment level that you're able to do. Um, it would be our honor and pleasure to have more people get involved with the conference. There's fresh ideas. The bigger the group grows, there's more people that can get involved. And it makes the conference and everything else that we do a whole lot better. So I'm encouraging you. The answer is yes, get involved. Our call for volunteers will go out sometime, I would say, February, March this next year. 
Our call for a committee is planned for January again, so that you can be on those bi-weekly calls if you want. Um, so please, please get involved. Uh, just maybe a quick mention before I move on as well. Last night in our Utah Saint board meeting, we changed the vetting requirements. Okay, so we changed the bylaws for the organization. It's worth applauding because here's what we've done. Uh, in case you haven't heard, and we kind of mentioned it before, that you no longer have to be vetted by two individuals to join. The vetting requirements are spelled out now as you present yourself to the organization, prove to some degree of assurance that you are a person, and if nobody can expresses any concerns for your joining the organization, you can become a member of the organization. And so we're gonna get some more information out on the website, we haven't updated it all yet, but understand that it's a whole lot easier to get in and join and be part of this great organization. So hopefully that helps. Um, also, so here's a fun slide to remind me to do this. You guys ready? Okay, Google, call mom. I think I heard like one phone beep, right? Should we do, hey Siri, call mom. Okay, good. Most of you guys are security geeks then. All right, how did you guys like the venue this year? Was it great? We, th we think so too. Uh, the, the conference venue probably couldn't have been better. It's a perfect fit for us. And if there's anything that we've learned, we're already a little too big for it. So if we plan to stay here next year, we haven't contracted yet, we're gonna look at a bunch of things and other opportunities. But if we stay here, we'll probably get the Expo Center downstairs and do some more expansion and make sure there's plenty of room for all of the cool new ideas that we've got. But we appreciate, I don't know if they're, they're in the room, but the Utah Valley Convention Center staff, they've been exceptional to work with. We've not had one, there's not been a single time where we've had to fight with them or wrangle things. They've been so generous and supportive of St. Con, and we give them a round of applause. <laughs> and then I can't not mention our sponsors. We appreciate. Uh, as I was looking around on, on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the sponsors that were hanging around upstairs, it was a zoo. You guys did an awesome job of going and talking with these people and making sure that they felt value for the time and money that they've invested in this conference. In doing that, they come back next year and they make it easy for us to expand our offerings in the badge, the lockpick village, the vault, and all these other things that cost a significant amount of money to put on. So I would like to recognize in stellar fashion our gold sponsors of Converge One and Symantec. And I'm not gonna name all of the other ones, but you can see them on the screen. If you see them, thank them, please for me. Thank them. I've done a good job of thanking them, I think, but if they hear it from a couple of other attendees, it'll re reinforce that. We appreciate their involvement in the conference. Can we get a round of applause for Troy's mess up and everything that he's done? So So, so you cut off my mic. Okay, so that's called a side channel attack. So what I would also encourage you to do, please, this helps us as well. This is one of the most valuable tools that we have in planning the next conference. If you have not already, please take the survey. The link is right on the front page of the St. Con website. If you take a few minutes, provide us some feedback, good or bad. We want to hear the bad things. We want to hear the good things so that we can continue to, to, to make the conference better for you, the attendee. All right, the other question that we have for you is, I think most of the people in this room have now received their Rosetta Coin PCB thing. Okay, that is the coolest piece of tech. It's probably, I mean, I don't want to, to um, under judge the badge or anything else, but if you want, if you get out of here without one of those things, that's probably one of the coolest things that you can take home from this conference. Um, and we encourage you to use that to participate in the Curious Code challenges and some of these other things that are out there. How many of you visited those booths and talked with those guys? They're some of the smartest crypto people that I know. I mean, there's, there might be better, but 
They're awesome, and we want to give them a round of applause. They came a long way to be here. And if you somehow didn't get your coin, will you see me or one of the committee members later, and we'll make sure you get there. The other thing, we mentioned this in the opening ceremonies, we've had exactly, and we planned it this way, 700 people registered to attend St. Con. Uh, I didn't get the final numbers, but we had about 98% of the attended, attendees uh, that registered be here at some point during the conference. Uh, and so it's really a great thing to almost double your conference numbers in a year. Uh, it's a challenge, and we are going to step up to that challenge and continue to allow it to grow. And so next year, we're planning on perhaps up to 1,000. We don't know if we'll get there, but we're going to plan on 1,000. We're going to shoot for badges at 500. That way, everybody's going to register early, and then we'll know what our numbers are. That was a joke. That was a joke. Okay. But yes, we're going, to move, we're going to plan on more, whether it's a thousand or not, I don't know. So let me also just mention the badge again. Jonathan, Clint, and all of the other people that helped contribute to that badge. I know Luke did some contributions, Seth, many others that I'll probably not be able to name off the top of my head, spent hours and hours building, testing, writing software. I mean, St. Con just doesn't pop up on your badge by itself. Um, there's people that spend a lot of time messing with that and making it right. They've done an incredible job this year and we're so proud of them and the ability that they have brought to this conference. And so we want to give them another round of applause. Thanks, Jonathan. And somebody's calling me. Let's see who it is. It might be my mom. Actually, if it's, if it's my understanding, my mother is in the audience right now. Is she? That's my mom over there somewhere. So it's not my mom calling me. All right, so for the first black badge that we're going to award today, and for those of you that don't know what the black badge is, it is kind of the ultimate trophy for St. Con. The wearer of the black badge is the person or is allotted or given free reign or free rights to join St. Con without paying for the rest of their life. And so we're going to award the first two badges to Jonathan Karras and Clint Holmes, if you guys will come up. I think it's only fitting that the people that designed this really cool piece of tech get to take the elite version of the tech home with them. I don't have the lanyards, but you can have the badges. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, before I move on to the rest of the awards, I want to just make another couple of mentions, and, and I don't mean to not mention them enough, because there's hundreds of hours that have gone into some of these other areas as well. The Hackers Challenge Village, where you got to go in and hang out on a bunch of couches. Didn't seem like a lot, but we had a great sponsor in there, playing techno music to keep the minds going, providing assistance on some of the challenges and things. They did a great job in keeping that tradition alive. The Hardware Hacking Village, Matt Lorimer and his volunteer staff, we want to give them a round of applause. They've done an excellent job this year. And also, I, I, I want to mention Lonnie Bates and his volunteer crew. We've taken the Lockpick Village and expanded our capabilities in that area. We plan on dumping more time and effort into it next year to make it even better, maybe change to slightly different uh, mechanisms of approach. Um, but Lonnie and those guys have done an exceptional job there. I would like to ask for a round of applause for them as well. And the next one, oh, there's a slide for the HHB Talks. How many of you guys have participated in the HHB Talks? If we're going off the survey, about half of you in this room attended a talk or so in there. We're hoping that those were valuable. We saw a lot of great responses from you. We're going to continue to do those as we go, in the, or as we go down the road in, in future conferences. Um, there's a lot of great things that we can do with those, and we're going to continue to expand those. And so it's awards time. I didn't mention the vault, but I'm going to do it during um, the uh, awards ceremonies and other things. So it's time for some of the awards. Uh, the way to do this in the most timely manner possible 
because we don't want to keep you here a moment longer than you need to be. Uh, if you're announced to receive an award, we would like you to come up and they're going to be handed out and I'm just going to kind of direct you to the people here that are responsible for handing those things out. So first up, we want to invite Josh Galvez back up to talk about the Hackers Challenge game and to announce the winners. Okay, awesome game, loved it. So the winners are first place. And the winner of a hacker's badge. And the winner of the black, black badge, badge is Professor Plum, Mr. Wayland Grange. You better come up on stage though, this is a big honor. This is Professor Plum and there's your black badge for 2016. Awesome, all right. Congratulations, and you've got some other prizes. Good job. I'm going to fill out for a second. Please. So I really love the challenge. And I appreciate all the, uh, the work that's been in, put into it, the guys who wrote this. Um, I, I'm up here, and I hope you're going to announce in second place and third, second, third, and how, fourth at least. I'm, I don't know how far you want to go. But all of them did. It, we were all right there. Everybody, everybody could deserve this, any one of them. So thank you very much. Remember, in our day and age, the, the weapon of choice is the knife, the rope. The revolver, this laptop. Thank you. Well said. Thank you. Second place, we have uh, Volder Mortensen. Garth, come on up. And uh, he's coming. Here you go, Garth. Good job. Like he said, you you were right there in the running. So maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> and third place, we have a uh, third place. We have Bash Ninja, Mike Weaver. Come on up. Good job. There you have a uh, rubber ducky and a USB kill with test brick. Good land turtles, the whole bit, right? Yep. <laughs> and he knows land how to turtle. use the rubber ducky. Yeah, be careful with the USB kill. <laughs> and just an honorable mention, uh, fourth and fifth, we had uh, Weed Patch 2 and Defective. Andrew Reed and Brad. I don't know, I Absolutely. Know. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Gotcha. Whenever I do that. All right. So. Hackers Challenge game, roaring success this year. We thank all of you that participated in that. I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see. Next up, we'd like uh, to invite uh, Lean, wherever he's at, come up here and announce uh, the winners of the vault. And uh, then after that, these individuals can come to Lean to get their prizes. Yeah. The anticipation is growing. You want to use this? So this is what the conference looks like. Before I, before I start, and I can't see anything, um, how many people at least took a look at the vault, walk by? That's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, can we get a round of applause for Jeremy, who spent hours and hours building that vault with his father? <laughs> You can record it, that's fine. Um, so, a couple quick pictures, if we can even see that. Maybe not. Okay, this is a structure. This showed up one day. Um, real quick, a couple of challenges RFID cloning, um, Maglock. And so, someone had cloned one of the RFID tags and they made a badge and then printed them out, and then started handing them out. Um, this is a picture of me sleeping at the Hack in the Box <laughs> two days ago, three days ago, because it was a long night. So um, I, when I saw this, it's, it's the, one of my most favorite things at the con. Um, when we put these things together, we don't know how you're going to solve them. We have our thoughts, but everyone surprised me on, on what they could do. It was really amazing to see this kind of come together. Um, we also have a 3D printed key at one point. 
That was really impressive. And uh, many people made keys themselves, and I think only one team actually filed it down themselves. So that was really cool, too. And it worked. Um, it worked. So always looking for new ideas, always looking for creative ideas. So we really appreciate the effort. Um, thank you, Mike, for not blowing up the Mac Mini after you backdoored it with a rubber ducky. Um, but that's awesome. You know, I, I kind of got upset. Hey, uh, why a rubber ducky? Why would we allow this? And I realized that we did it last year, so um, I should allow it. But that's the kind of thing that we, we don't kind of keep an eye out, and then it happens, and then we say, wow, that was really cool, that was really clever. So um, this was kind of us setting it up, putting it together. Uh, one of the challenges was a shred, shredding competition, or not competition, shreds, where you had to put them back together. Um, extra points if you left them in the shredder. So that was kind of fun. This one caught me off guard. Pope, uh, <laughs> We didn't think this was an attack vector, but apparently a coat hanger and pulling it actually works. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, this was a uh, pin pad through the window. A lot of uh, people didn't have any idea what they wanted to do, but they hopped in and tried, and they found it, it proved to be quite successful. So um, gloves, wasn't even considering that at first, but I'm, I'm happy it happened. Uh, how many people tried to bring in gloves or wipe down the room when they left? That was a great idea. Is that Grifter back there? I see that hand. Um, taking a picture of the QR code, taking a picture of the shreds. Um, in and out of the window, we had a window, so that was pretty, pretty fun and popular. Th this was interesting. Some people took the files out, threw them all over the room, and tried to figure out what was on it. Some people meticulously went through every folder and made sure it was facing the right direction, and that they took pictures, and they put it back the same way. And that was critical. Um, you want to keep the room, the idea was to get in, find evidence of something or, or the mission and get out undetected, the undetected part being the key. So you can see they were going through here meticulously. Um, you might not notice this, but there is a uh, ham radio there. Uh, one of the attack vectors was to capture the uh, pin reset to the base station, which was actually not successful by anybody. But one of the alternate attack vectors was jamming the sensors to the base station with the ham radio, which I thought was pretty clever. So congrats to all of those teams that tried that. And also congrats to those teams that still attempted it but may have accidentally unkeyed their mic and got caught. Um, but we learned for next year, right? This was clever. Uh, thank you, JC, for social engineering me during one of the walkthroughs so that uh, Snow could put black ink or black light ink on there so that when someone was touching the pin, it would smudge it and they could see the code. So very, very creative, clever ideas. I, would, I didn't even think about that at the time. Um, you'll note, you may not see it in this picture, but we actually shaved down the 7 so that you could see that was the worn down button. Um, that was fun. Hey, Grifter. We gave Grifter an opportunity to run through this with, uh, with Crypt and the, and the DEF CON guys. So he wanted to do it blindfolded. He wanted style points for blindfolding. Um, there is a video of him on Twitter right now <laughs> dancing inside of the vault blindfolded. And I have another video of him doing a swan dive through the window. <laughs> blindfolded. So um, one of the things that I would like to do is get some sort of blog write-ups from you guys. How did you attack it? What are some ideas for next year? I'd like to get it on the website. Uh, we'll, we'll upload it to the website with a ton of other pictures. Um, I did try and get all of the video recordings. So if your team wants a copy of that, I will try to do my best to get you at least some stills or some screenshots of that. Um, but then we're going to upload some of the content online, some of the walkthroughs, and uh, I hope you guys had a great time doing it. So I'm going to unplug for this. Um, we had a tie for fourth, so I am going to mention that. Um, it, it was really, really close. Um, a lot of success, a lot of unique entry points. So it really came down to cleanliness of the room and leaving things intact. Um, but a, a tie for fourth place would be uh, free hugs and candy and a team nemesis. So congrats to you guys for, for doing that. And when I say close, I'm talking about there was a five-point spread between each of the teams. So it was really, really close. I had to, I actually, the reason I haven't been out today, I've been going through the videos to validate and make sure that all of the scoring was as accurate as possible. Um, in third place, uh, we have the Team Wet Dog. You wanna, they said they might not actually be here, so congratulations to them. In second place, we have High Tech Low Tech. And you, can, you guys can start walking up and we'll, we'll get you some prizes. And in first place, you guys changed your name, but I'm going to use the first one. 
Um, congratulations to Team Black Badge. You guys may have renamed it to Hambone. Come on up, guys. All right, thank you. Thanks for all of the work that went into that. And uh, we're, we're planning on making that a black badge competition for next year. It, we think it's finally getting to that point. So another opportunity to get a black badge next year. All right, so he'll have your prizes and things right over there. All right, off to the next thing, I think. Wait, hold it. Okay, so I don't know how this, this should have been up a little bit higher, but this is a great opportunity for me to mention the Hardware Hacking Village Labs. It's a new thing that we did this year. Uh, again, Matt Lorimer and his volunteers, but especially Matt, put tons of time into creating all of those labs for you to follow. How many of you guys took advantage of that? Okay, how many of you guys played with technology that you'd never touched before and learned something new? Hopefully a lot of you. That's why we did that. We want it to continue to expand, and so we're bringing it back next year for sure, but thanks again to Matt Lorimer for his contribution in that. All right, so let's talk about the red versus blue competition. How many of you participated in that cool event? So based off of the survey results up until now, this is one of the most popular events that we've had here at the conference, and we didn't even realize it would be that. I mean, we thought it would be cool, but not as cool as it turned out. And so the cool thing is, is that they gave out the prizes for this, and so we don't have any specific awards uh, for this to award right now, and they didn't give me the names of the people that won. And so we're just going to recognize anybody who won that competition or, or participated in it. It was a great thing, and we very much appreciate CompuNet for coming and spending their time and energy to put it on for us. And so let's get, thank you. And so the badge modification competition, Matt, if you're down there somewhere in the bright lights, uh, why don't you come up for a second and talk about that and announce your winners. That's assuming you've got them. All right, so one of the things we were doing with the badge is, it's cool electronic, who likes having the badge? This is another props for Jonathan and, and Clint and everybody. If you love that your badge does something, tell them thank you, put it in your notes, whatever. Um, but yeah, the badge was awesome, but the whole point of it is not so that you have a badge that lights up, but so that you learn something and you go home and you do something with it later. It's not just uh, come to the con and have a busted badge that says the stock stuff. Um, but to make it happen, we had people trying badge mod of their own. We got, had people that thought that was boring and they tried to bad mod, or badge mod everybody's badge. Um, <laughs> How many had Narwhal on their badge in the last hour? Okay, All that right. was a side channel attack that somebody hijacked the entire badge system. More than that, who's willing to claim responsibility for Narwhal on all the badges? I don't... <laughs> nice. Come and, come and find me after this. I don't have anything for you now, but come find we'll, me. We'll, we'll do something for you. All right, so we had some people that did some mods that ranged from editing the Lua code to moving it over the Ardu moving, taking the Node MCU firmware off and going to just flashing with the Arduino IDE using C code. Um, but we've got a few things. And so first I want to bring up um, Mike Gilander and Weston Shakespeare. Are you guys here? Hopefully. I don't see him jumping up. These are a couple of high school kids. They're right over there. Right. Come on up. Come quick. on up. So these two kids are, how old are you guys? 17 and the rest of you look bad, thanks to them. Um, so these were the first two that I saw really digging deep and starting to mod their badge. Um, they're also the two that I know of that were trying, got bored modding their badge and tried to mod your bad, badge for you. Um, they were not the successful group, but they did try. So. Let's give these two a big hand for stepping up there. They both got their badges modded. They both got some stuff done. Um, we've got a prize for them, but let's give them a hand. And also, if we can get... Uh, what's John's last name? John Wheeler, are you out there? Come on up here. John's the one that he went through and started recreating new animations on his badge. There's probably more people that modded their badge. These are the ones that came and showed us. 
If you do it, just like Kevin said, the whole point of this, we love to see what you do. Kevin showed his badge, the, the real lean badge. We love to see this. The reason we leave this there is because we like to see what you do. So John also has modded his badge. If you watch, he's got animations and it flips through them and whatever. And we've got prizes for all these guys. Um, next year, I mean, every time we do this, whenever we have badges that, that do things, play with them. It's not something to take at the con and go hang up on your hook at, hook at home and never look at again. This, this uh, D1 Mini, the, the Wemos that's on here, has stackable things you can buy on it for three bucks from China. So it's, it's cheap. The whole point is to get cheap, fun toys in your hands you can play with. So everyone that modded your badge, give them all a hand. And thanks, everybody, for making it fun for us in the villages. All right, follow him. He'll have your prizes. Thanks again, you guys. All right, the next thing we wanted to do is announce the password cracking competition. Um, I might not do this part justice. Uh, Josh Dustin is the individual who is running that competition. He's unable to be here, so I'm going to do my best uh, to pinch hit and then talk about the winning team. Um, so first of all, um, what's that? Pancakes. Pancakes. So first of all, password cracking is not as complicated as it seems. In fact, you can buy a bunch of graphics cards now and stack them in a chassis and use GPU cracking to crack passwords incredibly fast. And so even long, complex passwords can be cracked in a reasonable amount of time, given the right hashes and everything else. And there's all this tech that goes into explaining how that works. But we had our first ever password cracking competition. Uh, Josh was grace or uh, was gracious enough. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, was gracious enough to come all the way across the country and do that for us. Um, and so he did that and gave a bunch of password hashes and gave everybody an opportunity to crack those. The individuals that participated the most in those were people that had password cracking rigs. And so we've got a couple of people. There's a, the, U the Yushi team um, that, that cracks passwords as part of pen testing and things. So they have a password cracker. Um, Weed Patch did the, some crack, password cracking as well that I'm aware of um, and has a password cracking machine. But the winners this year, what they did is they talked to the University of Utah and there's this Center for High Performance Computing Division. And so it just so happens that they had this gigantic GPU cluster and so they negotiated some time on that cluster and so I would like to announce the winners of the password cracking competition, none other than our own Ch Chunk and Nene. <laughs> so in case there's any concern that the, the committee members, because Chunk is a committee member, uh, all of these challenges and competitions are compartmentalized and so we do that so that if a committee member is really interested in participating, that they have that opportunity. So it is a legitimate win. They did do all the negotiations and they did all the computational time. So second place uh, goes to the Yushi uh, assessment team or Yushi access is what they call themselves. And then Weed Patch, you came in third place. And so Chunk does have your prizes up here. Being first place, he's probably picked the best ones already <laughs> for himself. But uh, come on up and, and deserve, you deserve a round of applause for participating in winning. All right, let's talk about the Tamper Evident Challenge. Okay, so the Tamper Evident Challenge was originally going to be integrated into the vault. But what we, we, we did is we could only afford to build about 24 of those challenge boxes. And what we felt is like, hey, there's probably going to be way more than 24 teams that want to play the vault. And we're concerned that a team that wants to play the vault but might not necessarily give the tamper evident challenge all of the due attention and focus that it requires, we pulled those out at the last minute and made them a separate challenge. And so we handed them out to teams that registered for the vault but expressed significant interest. And oh boy, did we have interest. And so. The Tamper Evident Challenge consisted of an ammo box similar to the one that you see up there on the screen and about five different layers of security inside. And I didn't bring one down, but inside the ammo box, in case you didn't see them all open upstairs, was another cardboard box with security tape around it. And inside there was a tamper-proof bag with a CD in a sealed case. And inside this, or 
And it, then you had to open that up and get to the CD, and then the CD had special codes that you had to figure out what on earth are these stupid special codes, and why did Troy put them inside of an image um, kind of things. And so we did that because tamper evidence is a security skill. It's something that helps you think outside the box and think security in the physical realm. And so we are so grateful that we had all of the teams that participated, almost every single one of them brought back their box, and almost every single one of them got to this code on the CD. And so it was exceptionally cool to see that. Um, and so we're, we're grateful to you for playing that challenge. Did you guys enjoy it? I hope so. What we're committing to next year is to bring Tamper Evident back, change it up, and make it a village for next year so that you guys can get more involved uh, in, in that process. And so to remind myself who the winners are, I'm gonna move back out here and open up a spreadsheet that has, hopefully, you don't wanna see my email. I mean, some of you might, but. All right, and so it's already up here on the screen. By a narrow margin, I'll even zoom that in maybe, hold on. Or it doesn't zoom in. You guys can see that. So Team Chainsaw is the winners. Uh, and in, in a tie for second place is Team Black Badge and Rabid Bunnies with, I put KI7GGR in there. I don't remember what Jonathan's team was, but you guys came in fourth place. Congratulations. And so these are the winners of the Tamper Evident Challenge. And the point spread on here was fairly minimal. So everybody did an incredible job um, in, in that competition. So give them a round of applause for winning that. And, and I think Lean has got the prizes up here, right? Yeah. So come up and get those from him when you're ready. All right, we're getting toward the end. You guys ready to go home? All right, so are we. All right, so the last couple of things I want to mention. Um, we want you to save the date. There will be a Saint Con 2017. Um, right now, these are the dates that we're planning on. I won't say that these are set in stone, but these are the dates that we think are the best for Saint Con 2017. And so I want you to put it in your calendar or remember it. Let other people know that you know. If you liked the con and you enjoyed being here and learning and, and interacting, we would love for you to make sure that you get this, the word out. Okay, the locations to be announced, uh, I can go on record and say that unless things break down or we have any issues, we plan on having St. Con at this very venue next year. So uh, we, would, we would love to make sure that you come back and join us, join us here. All right, the last slide that I've got, first of all, before I do this, did I miss any competitions? Are there any other things that I forgot to mention, committee members? The Sexiest Man Alive, Luke Jenkins, everyone. All right, then to bring this to a close, I'm going to just close my laptop and say, if you have nothing better to do for the next hour or so, hopefully less, you're welcome to stick around and help us tear some of this stuff down. There are a lot of tired committee members that have put in months of work that would appreciate being able to get home and see their families. And so to put a little bit of structure to this, all we're really asking for is that if you would like to pull up the power cables and get the gaff tape off them and just roll them up and put them up here in front of the conference, uh, you know, on the stage or whatever, we'll put them in the appropriate boxes and things and sort them. But if you want to rip those things up, that would be helpful to us. That's all the real help that we need or want uh, so that we can make sure everything else gets down, torn down in a, in a specific way and gets put away appropriately. So we thank you once again. We'll see you next year. And thank you very much. <laughs>